dearest Father, what a privilege it is to be part of your intentional design and masterful work. We thank you, God, that you thought of each of us individually and ordained us to be part of your amazing plan for the universe. O El Elohim, we thank you. Amen. Today's devotion is Finishing the Masterpiece. Our verse of meditation is Genesis 1, verse 1. In the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. You are in the hand of the master designer and creator. And every day, he fashions you to be more and more like him. You may not see the finished good now, but know this. God intends to create a masterpiece out of you. Our life story is about Yayoi Kusama, a Japanese artist who self-describes as an obsessional artist. Her particular obsession is dots. She paints dots on everything and creates masterpieces out of dots. She began painting as a child and dates her craft back to the times when she would have hallucinations that involved fields of dots. She, being from a wealthy Japanese family, was strongly opposed when she decided to pursue art, but she could not be stopped. So she moved to New York in 1957 and had her first solar exhibition in 1959. It was an immediate hit. One of her styles is known as the Infinity Net, which is painting as if the canvas does not end. This was truly Yayoi. She was infinitely obsessed with the creative energy. She became a central figure in the New York avant-garde, and her work was exhibited alongside that of artists such as Donald Judd, Claes Aldenberg, and Andy Warhol. Kusama moved back to Japan in 1973, and by her own choice, she started living in a mental health facility. But her work continued because it was her passion. In 2006, she received the Japan Art Association's Premium Imperial Prize for Painting. Her work has been the subject of major retrospectives throughout the 21st century, and her exhibitions attract record crowds. For her, the masterpiece is never finished, and she's led by her obsessive creativity. Everything we see, and even what we cannot see, came into being through the divine creative power of Elohim. Genesis 1 begins with a declaration of who the Creator is. In the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. Elohim is one of the most frequently used names in the scriptures. It occurs about 2,750 times in the Old Testament. The term means Supreme One or Mighty One the one whose power knows no limit. In the context of creation, he is a mighty creator, the supreme designer, I add. It is a plural noun, which is an indication that creation included Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In the beginning, says the Bible, the earth was void and without form, and the Spirit of God moved upon the waters. The use of both void, meaning empty, along with the without form, suggests a kind of emptiness that's not ordinary. It is a kind of emptiness that only Elohim could see a purpose in. It is just like an artist who visualizes a masterpiece from the moment he or she sees the piece of wood, the clay, or the empty canvas. Nothing existed there, and Elohim created. 
God created everything out of the words that he spoke. Let it be, and it was. The verse celebrates the creative power of God that makes everything visible and invisible. Nothing that was created was an afterthought. God designed it to be exactly as it is, and that includes you and I. We are part of an intentional design and creation. Ephesians 2 verse 10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. When we accept Elohim, we accept that there is purpose for our lives, that we are part of a perfect cosmic plan, that we are valuable. In Psalm 8 verse 3, David is awed by God's creative power and the inclusion of man in this plan. It reads, When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of us? And then he adds himself to creation and exclaims, For you formed my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. The psalmist celebrates Elohim's creative power that brought him into existence, and rightfully so, since Genesis 2 verse 7 tells us that Elohim formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. But David also recognized that God's creative power did not stop there. So in Psalm 51, we hear him pleading with God, Create in me a clean heart, O God. And later Paul declared to the Corinthians in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17, that God recreates us when we accept Christ as the old person passes away. And the master designer keeps working on us, the canvas. From nothing to everything, from dust to mankind, all in his perfect design. Elohim keeps creating and recreating until the masterpiece is finished. Are there any unproductive errors in your life, places that just seems empty turn it over to elohim he specializes in making greatness out of emptiness if you feel that all you have worked for has crumbled into nothing then you're in a great place with elohim he specializes in making something out of nothing have you ever had reason to laugh at how Elohim created a masterpiece out of a chaos just for you? Yes, he does, and he will do it again. As children of Elohim, we are constantly in anticipation for what he is creating in and through us. Each day reflects another stroke from his brush on the canvas of our lives. More than Yayoi Kusama, God's creative power remains active, creating and recreating. So as children of Elohim, fall asleep in hope and wake up in excitement, knowing that he's up to something today. Yes, today. He will finish the masterpiece he has started, the masterpiece that is you. Philippians 1 verse 6 says, Be confident of this thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. And we say, Amen and Amen.